everyone, welcome back to Prime News. Uh, yeah, we saw that giveaway going on for Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, giving away two copies. Check the description and the pinned comment down below. Also, hey, look, yeah, I asked you guys to drop likes on the last video, try to make it the most liked video on the channel in 2021. Uh, the problem, the most liked video in 2021 is this. And uh, yeah, we got to pass 1.2 thousand likes. That's not something to scoff at, but maybe we can come together as a community and pull it off. Let's get into the news because we have five big stories here for you guys. Not a ton of Nintendo stuff here, but the first couple stories uh, for you Nintendo fans might be of interest. After that, we got some big announcements, including some PC gaming stuff, some Sony stuff. Let's just jump into it. And I'm going to need my notes yet again for this first story because we're talking sales numbers in Japan. So, Japan sales are in for week four of 2021. Uh, they come from Famitsu. And we have the Nintendo Switch at the number one hardware spot. No surprise there. Selling 114,170 units. The PlayStation 5 also saw a bump uh, over last week, selling 25,928 units at the number two spot. Number three is at PlayStation 4, selling 3,873 units. And even the Xbox Series, which includes the X and the S, sold 1,099, which is actually over a 100% increase week over week. The 3DS is still kind of tapering in there with whatever units are left on the market at 588. Now, the number one selling software uh, in Japan for last week was Momotaro, still at 79,362. Number two is Ring Fit Adventure, which saw a 15% increase uh, over week over week at 42,124. We have Animal Crossing New Horizons at number three at 25,151. We have Dasagia 6, Defiance of Destiny, the only new release in the top 10 software sales for Nintendo Switch, selling 23,551 units. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe chimed in at number 5, 17,503 units. And here's actually the rest of the top 10. I'm not going to go over all the games. Uh, Switch is dominating at 9 to 10 spots. But notably, there is a PlayStation 4 game that finally snuck into the top 10 for the first time in like two months. Uh, and that is the Sagia 6 Defiance of Destiny. So the PlayStation 4 version of that, it's sold less than the opposite of the switch version at 15,761 fell at the number six spot but hey it's proof that you know when games come out on sony's platforms they could still sell a little bit anyways although i'm at a point now that i don't fundamentally understand why japanese game developers square enix and others out there uh, aren't more focused on bringing games to switch when uh switch makes up now software and hardware wise combined sales like 99 percent of the japanese market I mean, maybe these companies are just abandoning the Japanese market the way Sony seems to have done, but I don't know. I just find it strange. Whatever. Let's get into our next story. The Outer Worlds is finally getting DLC released on Nintendo Switch. The DLC pack we're getting is Peril of Gorgon, and this actually originally released last year on other platforms back in September. Uh, it costs... $14.99 back then. They have no price currently listed for what the Switch one's going to be. Although we have a release date, it's coming next week on February 10th. So they don't have a price announced with that release date. It's kind of weird, but I'm presuming, just like every other Switch game, that it's going to cost what it used to cost on the older platforms. Now, the thing about the Outer Worlds is it launched to some controversy on Switch in that it was really, really blurry, like beyond what we have become accustomed to with dynamic resolutions on Switch. And it also performed poorly. So you would get a super blurry game that had really low frame rate. It was just a really bad port. However, they did release patch 1.2 back in October of last year. And while well, at that point people had kind of given up on the game, uh, it actually fixed a lot of this. It made the game much prettier. And it also, hey, fixed the frame rate issue. So actually, today, The Outer Worlds is actually a, a pretty good game on Switch. Perfectly playable, perfectly acceptable. If you're interested in getting it, it is still technically a little bit more expensive than the other platforms, but the price has obviously come down from launch, because remember, it was a $59.99 uh, launch game, that premium AAA pricing. Well, it is down to $29.99 over on Amazon. I'll put an affiliate link down in the description if you're interested in picking it up. Uh, so yeah, again, 
it is only 20 bucks on other platforms, but if you only own Switch or you prefer to have it on the go, it's actually a worthwhile play and I can suggest it if you were interested in this game before but we're waiting to see, hey, can they actually fix it? Well, they did and they're bringing the DLC now too. This next story woo, has me tingling a little bit because for those who don't know, I am a massive Total War PC gaming fan. Total War is a series by uh, Sega made by Creative Assembly and my gosh it is one of the best like strategy battle games to exist in pc history like right up there with the age of empires of the world except much more successful over a longer period of time i was there at the very beginning when it was just sh called shogun total war total war wasn't even like the overall name of the series it was called shogun total war we've had shogun total war 2 uh, medieval total war there's been a troy total war there's been a rome total war uh there's been a total war empires there's been a whole bunch of total war games and i pretty much loved all of them although I haven't played as much of them lately. Well, a brand new Total War game was announced. And of course, we're talking about Total War Warhammer 3. So right now you are seeing the cinematic trailer uh, released to announce this game. And typically I don't like cinematic trailers. However, uh, the Total War Warhammer franchise, which has two games in it, is actually among the highest rated games in the Total War franchise and has obviously established a reputation that you can trust Creative Assembly to not mess up a Warhammer version of Total War. Uh, so yeah, it kind of sucks that we're not going to see some gameplay here, but honestly the gameplay is going to look a lot like the last two Warhammer versions. Warhammer is a massive IP with lots of books and stories. I actually played the MMO when it came out back in the day. I don't know a ton of lore behind Warhammer, so I don't know how exciting we should be over some of these uh, details here, but it seems that Warhammer fans are pretty hyped for this game. Uh, one, because it's going to be a really, really good game, and two, because of the story direction and, and what's available. So let's get into some of the nitty gritty details. Uh, so the pro uh, so it revolves around the forces of Kislev and Cathay with appearances by Korn, Slanish, and Tizinch. I don't, I I'm sure I butchered those names. Uh, it's set around the reign of Carl Franz, and there's actually going to be nine playable lords. Uh, it will get a late 2021 release, so this is kind of one of those candidates that, hey, could be delayed to 2022, but whatever. Uh, interestingly, they're actually releasing a free patch after the game comes out that if you own Total War Warhammer 1 and Total War Warhammer 2 along with Total War Warhammer 3, It'll actually combine all of the maps into one massive map for the totality of the Warhammer franchise. See, again, I think this is really wholly interesting. I'm really glad they're doing this. For Warhammer fans, it's great. For me, a, just a Total War fan, like Total War Warhammer, even without knowing any Warhammer lore, really, I actually have one Warhammer book on my shelf, but I, I still haven't read it. I've had it for a long time. Uh, yeah, like I don't know anything about the lore, and I just still don't care because I know it's going to be really, really good because it's a Total War game. So. PC gaming news, baby. That's what we're talking about. So our next story is about EA, in particular Battlefield, because Andrew Wilson, they recently had an earnings call uh, talking about all the latest financials, and in the Q&A section, he was asked about Battlefield, and he said, hey, guess what? We're getting a Battlefield game this year for this holiday. He guaranteed and promised it, uh, and he said it's going to be like one of those defining Battlefield games. Of course... They say this all the time, and Battlefield has been hit and miss over the years. There have been some good ones. There have been some bad ones. The last one was kind of torn in the middle where some people loved it, some people hated it. But it is going to be the first one built for next gen, including Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, obviously PC. Uh, probably expect it to also be uh, cross-gen, so it'll probably still be on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. But it is the first next-gen Supposed to be definitive Battlefield game. We'll see. Uh, they use a lot of this marketing speak all the time to puff up their games. So who knows how much you can believe, especially when it comes out of Andrew Wilson's mouth. Uh, but yeah, he also, a, a note for like Star Wars fans, he said, uh, hey, we're not done making Star Wars games either. So yeah, they don't have exclusivity anymore, but they're still going to be making probably another Battlefield game. Uh, I'm sorry, another Battlefront game. <laughs> and who knows what else is in the pipeline. Now, if you remember yesterday, we actually talked about Sony's financials. One of the first times we've actually deep dove into Sony's financials on this channel. And we have kind of a follow up to that because Sony put out there uh, in the Q&A section of their own uh, meeting that they actually have a forecast for the first full 
fiscal year. And they call it fiscal year two uh, for PlayStation 5 because it is technically the start of a new fiscal year, which will run, uh, what is it, April uh, 2021 through March of 2022. They run on the same fiscal year as Nintendo. And they are saying that, hey, look, we plan to ship and sell 14.8 million PlayStation 5s. Now, that is notably obviously behind Nintendo's pace, which at this point, they might hit 30 million this, by the end of this fiscal year, which ends March 31st of 2021. But the point is that it is actually a significant bump over what they did with the PlayStation 4, which was closer to only 10 million units in its second fiscal year on the market. So it's actually an increase. However, as enthusiastic as obviously Sony is about the PlayStation 5 platform and the demand, they did mention that you know what there is actually a semiconductor shortage in the industry if you ever wonder why it's really hard to get xbox series x's and hard to get uh playstation 5s right now why it's hard to get uh certain gpus out there be it you know the 3000 series graphic cards or the 6000 series from amd or even certain processors you know some of the newer processors especially uh, that released late in 2021 like why is it so hard to get these products well it's because there is a massive semiconductor shortage and we need semiconductors to make these products so with a worldwide shortage on semiconductors it's going to lead to sony potentially not being able to hit this 14.8 million mark and they admitted hey we don't know we could be well short of 14.8 million because they can't make enough because there's not the available technologies, the available supply of those semiconductors to pull it off. And AMD has already announced that, hey, with our GPUs and our Ryzen, um, you know, CPUs, that we are not going to, you know, catch up the demand for at least six months, if not longer. And that's just talking about the PC side of things. For those who don't know, uh, you've been living under a rock, but the Xbox Series X and S and the PlayStation 5 are using AMD technologies, including the new Ryzen and new Ryzen uh, GPUs and all that. So uh, Ryzen GP AMD GPUs, Ryzen CPUs, but it's all, it's all under the AMD umbrella. So yeah, there's a big shortage. So um, it just might be really hard to get a PlayStation 5 even in the next year. Uh, I have a feeling it, it could go all the way into 2022 before we start to feel confident in our ability to buy techno technology pieces again, uh, likely in a post-pandemic world, hopefully at that point. I'm hoping by that point, almost everyone could, that you know is willing to get vaccinated gets vaccinated. But anyways, that's it for Prime News today. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I know not a ton of Nintendo news. Also, kind of a small note, I'm wearing this Sega shirt today, kind of in celebration of Sega Prime being announced yesterday. Uh, there's actually a Sega Lego set out there that's now been approved. Uh, it was a fan-driven campaign, and now, like, hey, Sega's like, well, we're gonna, or, or Lego's like, hey, we're actually gonna get a hold of Sega and try to make this thing reality so i just had to throw on my little sega shirt to be like yeah you know what shout out to sonic my boy baby my boy shout out to sega look at all those systems look at all the and and by the way this is like a shirt from last time e3 existed this actually came directly from sega uh after i played um mario and olympic uh the mario olympic games tokyo games or whatever that we still haven't had the actual olympics happen yet uh back in 2019 anyways that's what i got for you guys thank you so much for tuning in and as always i want to dance my butt out of here.